introduce the idea of the mole. A mole is a number that was made up so that one mole of protons or neutrons has a mass of basically one gram. So because of that, we could look at the number of protons and neutrons on the periodic table. We could look at the atomic mass on the periodic table. And we could use it as a molar mass, which would allow us to go from grams to moles or moles to grams. But I want to remind you in our discussion that a mole is actually a number, Avogadro's number of things. So to four significant figures, one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So we can also, instead of going from moles to grams, we can also go from moles to particles. Now that may be atoms, it may be molecules, or it may be formula units. <clears throat> so let's take a look um, at an example to see how that is used. So here, the first question says, how many atoms are in two moles of iron? With our problems, we start with what is given to us. We start with the number that we know. So here we have two moles of iron. Now the symbol for iron is Fe. Iron is just an element, and it occurs as individual atoms. So our question here is asking us about atoms of iron. So all I want to do is switch from moles back to the number of particles. And in this case, the particle is atom. We're going to set that up the way we learn by unit analysis or dimensional analysis. We'll put our multiplication. We want to get rid of moles. We want to switch from moles into just particles. And since our particles are atoms in this case, we're going to switch from moles directly to atoms. What you have to know to do that is how they're related. And they're related by definition, one mole is Avogadro's number. So one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So if we get ready to find that, moles cancels, we just multiply out. And if you multiply, you get 12.044 times 10 to the 23rd. Or you could say 1.2044 times 10 to the 24th. Now, as we're doing this, I also want to review your significant figure rules. Our original measurement only had two significant figures. Here we had Avogadro's number to four significant figures. Two is less, so we're going to round our answer off to two significant figures. So we're going to call this 1.2 times 10 to the 24th atoms of iron. So it's a pretty simple process as long as you know that one mole is Avogadro's number and you know that Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Well, let's look at another example. It's just a little bit different, though it's almost the same. This time, instead of asking about atoms, the question is going to ask about molecules. Now, a molecule is a group of atoms that are bonded together in a specific way so that you can tell that the atoms belong together. Molecules make up covalent compounds. We sometimes call covalent compounds molecular compounds. We'll talk more about that when we talk about bonding. Right now, just know that a molecule is a group of atoms that are hooked together. So the question says, how many molecules are in 1.5 moles of carbon dioxide? And it shows you the formula for a molecule of carbon dioxide. It's CO2. So we start with the number that we know. We know 1.5 moles of carbon dioxide. And again, we want to make a unit conversion. So we're just going to switch from moles. This, in this case, we're going to switch directly to molecules. So remember, a mole is a number, but it can be a number of anything, like a dozen. A dozen can be a dozen donuts, or a dozen eggs, or a dozen people. A mole can be a mole of atoms, or a mole of molecules. So since we're talking about carbon dioxide, we're talking about molecules. So we're going to switch straight from moles to molecules. To do that, we use the same relationship. One mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Now, if we multiply this out first without rounding, we get 9.033 times 10 to the 23rd. Then we look at our significant figures. We have two significant figures. We have four. Two is less. So we're going to round to two significant figures, and we're going to call our answer 9.0 times 10 to the 23rd, specifying the units, molecules of carbon dioxide. Now, I do also want to make
Hellenic and note that we abbreviate moles as MOL, so you can't abbreviate molecules that way. Just write out molecules to, to let whoever is looking at your answer know specifically what you're talking about. So these two problems are relatively straightforward. And even though one has to do with atoms and one has to do with molecules, they're done basically the same way. Sometimes uh, the questions can be made a little bit trickier by asking you about how many atoms are in a certain number of mole of molecules. So if I had been looking at carbon dioxide, and instead of asking about molecules of carbon dioxide, I had asked about atoms. You should be able to see that there's one atom in a molecule of carbon dioxide, one atom of carbon, but there's two atoms of oxygen in a molecule of carbon dioxide. Let's look at another example where I actually ask you about the atoms in a compound. Now, in this case, the compound that we're going to look at is magnesium chloride. Magnesium chloride is not a covalent compound. It doesn't group together in distinct ways that we can tell the molecule. It's an ionic compound. <coughs> we'll talk about later that it bonds in a crystal lattice. It's a crystalline structure. So instead of calling it a molecule, when we look at the, the grouping for an ionic compound, we will call that a formula unit. So atoms are just individual atoms of an element. Molecules are groups of atoms that are bonded together in a distinct way for a covalent compound. And formula units are the simplest whole number ratio for an ionic compound. <coughs> the question says, how many chlorine atoms are in 5.50 moles of magnesium chloride? We're still going to use basically the same process. Start with the number that you know, 5. 0 0.50 moles. Specify what it is. Magnesium chloride is in GCl2. Now, in this case, we want to switch to chlorine atoms. We can't switch directly to chlorine atoms, but we can switch moles directly to a number of particles. Now, because it's an ionic compound here, we're going to call the particles formula units. But the relationship is still the same. One mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. We now <coughs> know the number of formula units of magnesium chloride. But what we want to know is how many chlorine atoms. And what you should be able to see by looking at this formula is that there are two chlorine atoms in one formula unit of magnesium chloride. So we just add a second step. There are two chlorine atoms in one formula unit of magnesium chloride. So now we're ready to get our answer. Moles cancels, formula units cancels, and we're going to end up with chlorine atoms. Chlorine atoms. So if we multiply that out, we have 5.50 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd times 2. And when we work that out, we end up with 6.62 times 10 to the 24th chlorine atoms. Now, I've already rounded this off. I want to talk about how I rounded. This measurement had three significant figures. Avogadro's number here is rounded to four significant figures. When you look at this, you may think one significant figure. But remember, this is a count. There is exactly two chlorine atoms in one formula unit of magnesium chloride. So we don't have to worry about the significant figures with a count. So this doesn't pay, play any part in how we round. So three is less than four, so we rounded our answer to three significant figures. Hopefully you see that. The big idea is that we can take moles, which we showed earlier we can switch to grams, or we can switch grams to moles, but now you also see that we can switch moles into some kind of particle. That could be atoms, that could be molecules, that could be formula units. 